Hello friends, welcome to another very important lecture in data analytics that is known as heart disease prediction. This lecture is important from the point of view that we implement the feature engineering in this particular lecture and the students will go to going to get an idea that how much the feature engineering is important and how much it is important to have the, the good features in our data set whenever we try to build a model and how can we handle out the continuous variables and categorical variables together what is an effective way so i'm going to teach you that what is an effective way to handle out all these important uh, things while uh, designing a heart disease prediction algorithm and uh, before this we're going to use the heart disease uh, dot csv data so let's start our journey of learning firstly we're going to authorize our google drive <coughs> sorry and uh, then uh, these are the fam uh, familiar syntaxes you are aware about these things and um, i have to take the permission and uh, here i have got it okay then uh, i'll going to just run my csv file and uh, now look at these important packages which i have imported random matplotlib seaborn min max scalar for normalization accuracy score precision mean squared error and linear regression ten test splits okay and then i'm going to use the hard disk csv file and uh, let us check the shape okay it is 918 segment uh, and samples are there and uh, the total 12 features are there which also include whether you have hard disease or not right so this is the data so heart disease is a is a definitely a categorical variable of 0 and 1 so we were going to use the sigmoid if we were be using the the tensor flow but since we are not using tensor flow here we are using the logistic regression classifier here okay so 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 let, let us see this one what we have done here is that i have just uh, as a as, as an effort of feature engineering what i decided that i'm going to uh, uh, separate the count continuous variables and uh, in quant underscore var and uh, this is my way of dealing these uh, categorical variables and continuous variables when they are together i first uh, go and encounter on uh, on the continuous variables and uh, apply um, normalize them do some feature engineering take care of the relevant in uh, input uh, uh, input variables and uh, then uh, normalizing normalization and different after doing number of eta steps then uh, i just feed them into the model and uh, analyze the results then i go for the categorical variables and normalize them analyze the results right so now then i'm going to use my correlation you can see here that uh, the correlation table here which says the resting bp cholesterol and what is important here is that i would like to put in here in your mind is that uh, you have should always keep in mind that whenever we have two different two vectors then it is very important then uh, they should be far apart they should not be um, collinear right they should not be like this these type of vectors are not allowed because they do not uh, they do not contain any separate separable informations they be a, this is assumed that they they be a same informations so you can see here that uh, okay these uh, this resting bp has very low correlation with cholesterol very very low correlation with fasting ds negative in fact with the uh, with the mx max hr and uh, old peak similarly call for call with cholesterol the, the same thing with resting bp negative here for fasting and max very low for the old peak so we are pretty much sure that we have we had we don't have any strong correlations with the variables right so i think that there is no need to drop anyone so now look at these visualizations this will going to uh, give you an idea that okay, what is the impact of uh, resting bp on the heart disease zero means no heart disease one means uh, heart disease so you can you can you can see very easily that there is no significant uh, effect of um, of this uh, uh, resting bp on the uh, on determining the heart disease similarly we're going to have the chest pain type and uh, different type of chest pain types okay and uh, you can see that and uh, uh, when we are when we are taking in contrast with the arresting bp we are finding that okay they all are equal 
uh, but a little bit in edge is there with ta type of chest pain right then we have to check it for the college chest pain with cholesterol also you can see that uh, those persons who have very high cholesterol have ata type of pain and uh, less values have uh, nap type of pain asy type of uh, chest pain are being there for those persons who have cholesterol at the level of around about 175 and then ta likewise okay so now this is the box plot and this box plot can be used to remove the outlier it is one of the very famous plotting technique which we normally use and uh, if you want to see it more clearly you can see that uh, that uh, these values are being treated as outliers normally and uh, if you wish you can remove them these is these are the outliers my dear friends which are which are normally not allowed they disturb the data right since uh, <clears throat> there are not so many so we are not going to remove them and it's okay and uh, now normally we always try to keep the data we should not have a have an have an have an eye to remove the data we should have an eye to accept the data till as long as we can tolerate right so these are the box plots of the chest pain and resting bp now look at the distribution plots a good normal distribution is there you can see here normal good normal distribution shows that okay data is quite good scatter and with the mean value of around about 140 i think of the rest in bp <coughs> sorry so this is how we do draw our distribution plots my dear friends hist plot is a with k with kd equals to true give you the normally the distribution by yourself again the disk plot for cholesterol this is also good but this is the outlier here can be removed very easily and uh, this is again a hist plot for the and then fasting bs right this is i think that it is not going to be a good data set so uh, this is how we de deal with these different type of uh, normal and non normal and non normal representation so you can think that if you see that uh, some data sets are not normal then then you can normalize them and after normalization automatically they become you know, uh, you can say that uh, normal distributions and uh, this is how the correlation is being tested again okay so it is now seeking seeing some good correlations with the now we can test it with heart disease also so heart disease bears a good positive correlation with age okay it sounds good also no problem so this is how describe is working here okay so this is further multi plotting so you can see them i have uh, made them for you now let us focus on this particular model building so no problem with the model building and so now as you can see that uh, we have already worked a lot on the continuous data so now let us work on some uh, some uh, work has to be done with the categorical data also so to work on categorical data we basically do one hot encoding right one hot encoding of chest pain type <coughs> and it will going to give you the the segments of uh, we all know that one hot encoding is one zero sorry it is one zero 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 like this no? zero one i have already discussed this in detail in my lectures for you in this way right but uh, but before that it is very important that you should understand that what is label encoding basically what happened that as you see as you see, you are seeing that uh, in chest pain type there were different type of chest pain types so we don't we, we what we do is that we first convert them into the label encoding so that each one will get a label okay suppose there are four type of uh, chest pain types are there if you remember then what we done here is that we have uh, we have uh, encoded each one of them with a value right let uh, let me run this one for you all and uh, you can see that there's an increment in the dimensions of course and <clears throat> look at this one this is chain chest pain type ata nap ata something like that no what i uh, what we're going to do here is that we're going to do the label encodings look at the chest pain type it is asy nap ata and ta okay so what label encoding will going to do here is that it will going to encode this one with zero this one is one this one is two this one with three okay 
and after then we were going to run the get dummies to convert into the dummy well to uh, after that we we're going to do one hot encoding to convert them into 0 1 1 1 pair right look at this neighbor encoder which i have used from sklearn and this is our how this is how i instantiate it and then i just fit it this this uh, df underscore hard one i'll have uh, fitted by applying the label dot fit transform okay after after implementing this one when i run this particular code you have seen that okay chessman type has been converted into 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 yeah it is started from 0 and 0 1 2 3 right so now each and every value is now converted into a discrete integer value or a continuous value no matter what it should be after then i now i will going to do the one hot encoding so the step is steps are clear first whenever you have categorical variables do the label encoding and after then do the one hot encoding and then convert it into the array now look at this encoded shape it is a big encoded shape is there because for each and every value 1000 0, 0, 0, so the size automatically increases this is the encoded array okay let me run this again this is the original data okay this is my dummy data which i have fitted and trans transformed right now uh, i have just have to select the categorical variable these are my categorical variables sex chessman type resting ecg exercise engineer and st slope this is how i filter the categorical variables after reading the values and uh, using the column as categorical variables now i have categorical variables you can see my data frame here this only now can have the categorical variables so i have now two frames one is continuous having the continuous variables and another one has the has the categorical variables okay so now two features uh, two set of features are there one one uh, one set has only continuous variables as features another set has categorical variables as features right <coughs> now i am going to have the label new label transform and uh, look at this each and every thing has been converted into 0101 0, 1 pattern okay and uh, you can see it very easily now i am going to just fit transform uh, fit transform it into one hot encoding new label underscore osc instant for one hot encoding now this is my final categorical data which is fully converted into one hot encoded data Right, cat, which is known as cat underscore data. So my cat underscore data is the categorical variable data which I have labeled transformed. And after label transformed, I have done, I have done the one hot encoding of the of that particular data. Now there was there is um, but there is still what is remaining here is that my old continuous data which I have to do the normalization. Okay, so I'm going to normalize my continuous data. Yeah, this is my continuous data set. Which I have already been shown to you. Now I am just going to fit transform it and normalize it. This is my normalized continuous data. Now I have two data sets. Heart one contains the normalized continuous data and the cat underscore data which is categorical data. After then, after normalizing this, I am going to transform it into the whole data frame. And here, one very important factor I am going to calculate. I have told about this a lot in my lecture that various inflation factor. I have to calculate the various inflation factor, and it is now it is an, uh, not to tell you that from 0 to 5, it means that each and every feature play a very important role in determining the output. So when I run this VIF underscore data, I got that resting VP has a very good relationship with all other features because it has a range of it is lying um, within the range of 0 to 1. Similarly, cholesterol has also a very good range, very good between 0 to 1. So, very good feature. It shares a very good relationship between resting BP, fasting BS, MXHR, and old P. If you have any confusion regarding VIF, please visit to my previous lectures where I have told you about the variance inflation factor in great detail. Then, fasting BS is there, MXHR, and old peak all share a very, very good relationship. Why? Because they are within the range of 0 to 5. Right? 0 to 5. So, my continuous variables which i have taken in my feature are very good feature variables because they have a very good vif score respective vif score is very good and also they are not very much correlated with each other okay and each and every variable is now normalized also okay so my dear friends this is to bring in your kind of knowledge that df underscore heart underscore one underscore norm is the normalized data